is important information. It's the Department of Transportation reports that actually reveal uh, a number, hundreds in fact, of pet deaths, injuries or illnesses when they fly. And in recent years, those numbers are actually up. Right now, you're about to meet little Cooper, who was close to death after a flight to Arizona. When it came time for their annual trip to Arizona, Cooper, come here. Wake up. Gene and Michael Hoffman didn't think twice about taking their six-year-old Yorkshire Terrier, Cooper. When we put out his travel kennel uh, and unzip the top, he actually goes, uh, jumps into it. While Cooper had some health issues in the past, the Hoffmans say their vet cleared Cooper to fly from their home in Minnesota down to Scottsdale. He's been on planes, oh, at least three or four times. But during the flight, the Hoffmans say they couldn't see how Cooper was coping. It's uh, airline rule that the, the animal remains below the seat for the entire flight. It wasn't until we landed, actually, that we discovered that the dog was having serious, serious issues breathing. Landing at Sky Harbor Airport, they rushed Cooper outside and out of his kennel. The dog was collapsed on the sidewalk and his tongue was blue. Cooper's situation was touch and go for days. The Hoffmans aren't the only pet owners who've had to deal with problems on flights. The investigators looked through hundreds of animal injury, death, and loss reports collected by the Department of Transportation. We found the number of incidents on U.S. operated airlines increased by nearly 90 percent from 2009 to 2010, from just 29 to 55. While the DOT says that number is small compared to the millions of animal transports each year, we found some airlines had more incidents than others, like Delta, which reported the highest number of cases between 2008 and May of 2011, with 39, followed by American Airlines and Alaska Airlines. The figures are skewed um, towards the carriers that do allow pets in cargo, and potentially the, the bigger carriers. Dr. Billy Griswold is an emergency veteran. We found the majority of the incidents involved dogs, specifically English, French, and American bulldogs, and pugs, otherwise known as short-nosed breeds. Singling out all the dogs in the breed would be difficult because there are a number of that still can breathe functionally. He recommends having your pet examined and getting a health certificate before you fly each time. To prevent injuries, pay attention to the environmental conditions. Dr. Griswold is against using sedation on animals, even if they're flying under your seat. You should note that pre-existing conditions just may explain why some pets pass away on board flights. And we have some statements from the airlines tonight. Delta, American, and Alaska Airlines all told us they do take pet transports very seriously and encourage pet owners to check airline policy before flying. Oh, and about little Cooper, his owners say the next trip to Arizona, they will drive to make sure the little guy doesn't have any problems. Bill Proctor, Channel 7 Action News.